stones and uh, uh, everything. So, and you have to kill yeah. everyone. No. That's progress. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That is progress. That is moving forward. Um, okay, good. That's probably what you should be thinking about then, I guess. Um, Raul, how's it going? Hi, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Hi. And Raul, have I had you in class before? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, so it's been a little, a little while, maybe. Where are you from? I've forgotten. From Spain. I'm from Spain, from Valencia, in Spain. Nice. And all right, what have you been up to recently? What have you been doing? What? Sorry. I don't understand. What have you been up to recently? What have you been doing? Why I I am work in uh, in in a bank like uh, as financial advisor. Um, I am here because I need in, to improve my English because uh, in finance in in financial world is is necessary uh, uh, have a, a good level good English level okay we would say in the financial world so in the in the financial, financial world okay um, it's important to have a good English level maybe yes okay, okay. and I guess this week what have you done this week this week in uh, in Christmas season, <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. Uh, uh, in my with my I am with my family uh, uh, eating a lot of food, <laughs> like <Okay. laughs> and uh, and with my girlfriend. Um, I I have uh, visited my my family. Uh, and uh, and uh, I'm playing with my uh, with my the sounds of my uh, of my sister the my niece is my, my niece is a nephew yes my niece nieces and nephews yes a niece is a female and a nephew is a male so nieces niece. and nephews okay and. And um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Definitely sounds enjoyable. Um, all right. And uh, Simone, welcome back. How's it going, Simone? Oh yes, everything is okay. How are you after Christmas? Well. After Christmas? Yeah. Have How you eaten too much? <laughs> um, no, actually, I was. I was pretty. You know, judicious with my eating. Uh, I ate a lot, but I didn't eat too much. I was, I, I was okay. Um, I, was I little, did. I was in a, <laughs> did you? Nice. Well, yeah, yeah. I guess sure. can't complain. I was in a place that was really hot, so it was not like conducive to really eating a lot. I know. I feel like when I'm getting hot, I just want to eat fruit and drink juice and water. Me too. Yeah. But he is not that hot, so. Yeah, it's so you can eat a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, hopefully it was enjoyable. What were some of the things that you ate? Uh, just uh, ordinary things. Chicken, salad, rice, and lots of cakes. Because nice. my friends, they, they know how to cook really good cakes. And we bake uh, cakes. We bake, cook. yeah. So, hmm? Okay, thank you. So, yeah, so... That's it. It sounds delicious. I love cakes. Um, Me too. What kind sometimes. of cakes were they? Chocolate. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, one of them was chocolate, and another one like strawberries. Okay, it's nice. I guess I like pies more than cakes. Like pumpkin pie is probably one of my favorite things ever. Um, yeah. It's <laughs> anyways, yeah. Um, let's get started with today's class. So let's start with this one. Might be a little bit tricky. Let's have Anna Carolina. Can you read the title and the first part? The Red Saints of Lady Inn. Egbert came into the large, dimly lit drawing room 
with the air of a man who is not certain whether he is entering a dove coach of a bomb factory and it's prepared for either eventuality. The little domestic quarrel over the luncheon table had not been fought to a definite finish. And the question was how far Lady Anne was in a mood to renew or, or forego hostilities? <laughs> Good. All right, so definite. Definite. And either? 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 Yeah, you can say either too. Um, I just like either. Um, that's what I would say. Either. Um, but yeah, don't worry if you say either. That's fine. Eventuality? Eventuality? It's like more of an eventu. Eventuality. Uh, okay. Eventuality. Perfect. Nicely done. Okay. And questions here. This is a little bit tricky, maybe. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, some new words. Mm -hmm. Timely. Timely lit. I okay. can try to guess, but I, I've never heard this word. What's your guess? Hmm. Oh, oh, I lost the text. Oh, no. Um, I'm not sure why. No, so no, dimly. that's my fault, because I am on my cell phone, sorry. No worries. Um, does anybody know dimly? Maybe it's not that bright. Yeah, not very brightly. It's the opposite of brightly. Um, other questions? Um, a dove code is like a birdhouse. It's like a really peaceful place. Um, other questions? Quarrel over the luncheon table. <clears throat> okay. Does anybody know what a quarrel is? A word fight. A fight, yeah. So it's a synonym for fight. Uh, luncheon table? What's the luncheon table? Maybe the table people have lunch on. Yeah, exactly. So there's just a lunch table, the table where they ate lunch. And uh, forgo is forget. It's like forget. Yeah. It's like let them go. Just, um, yeah, to move but on. But it's a move. real word, or it's just like. Yeah. Forgo is a real word. Uh, oh, okay. This is kind of an older story. It's funny, which is kind of why I chose it. Um, there's some good, good lines. But yeah, some of the words are a little bit older. Forgo isn't used very often, I guess. Um, but yeah, I just like to forget about that. You could still use it. It's not it's not completely out of touch. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. And we have Juliette, can you read the next part? Her pose in the armchair by the tea table was rather elaborately rigid. In the gloom of a December afternoon, Egbert's prize nets did not materially help him to discern the expression over her face by way or bre breaking whatever eyes might be floating on the surface he made a remark about a dim religious light he or Lady Anne were accustomed to make the remark between 4.30 and 6 on winter and late autumn evenings it was a part of their married life good um, which is kind of goofy but Elaborately. 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 Perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> the pince nez, the, the, like his glasses, um, they're old fashioned glasses. Um, do, do, do. Oh. 
He was blind almost. Um, mm -hmm. not blind. He just needs glasses, and like he couldn't quite see make out the expression on her face. So she's sitting rigidly, but it's like gloomy and kind of dark. And so he's like, I don't know exactly what she's trying to express on her face. Mm -hmm. um, so like he wants to break the ice. He wants to like make a remark. And so he makes a remark about a dim religious light, which is really silly because it's a, apparently what they say on winter and autumn evenings, just like always, which is silly. But dim is, again, not bright. So again, I've got dimly, not very brightly. Um, and dim is kind of dark, not bright. Any other questions? Okay, and let's go to the next page. Simone, can you read the next part? Yeah, um, there was no recognized rejoinder to it, and late any made 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 known. Don't arkin you, lay what a stretch oh, on the <laughs> Persian rug. Basking in the firelight with suburb indifference to the possible humor. Oh, it's so difficult to read on this cell phone. Okay, sorry. Uh, possible hill humor of Lady Annie. Hold His on pedigree. One second. I'm just going to make this bigger. Oh, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, oh, it's much better. Okay, so his pedigree was a flawlessly Persian as the rug, and his ruff was coming into the glory of its second winter. The page boy, who had Renaissance tendencies, had christened him Don Torquinio. Torquinio. Tarquinio, oh my gosh. <laughs> no worries. Don Tarquinio. Okay, so this is tough. Bear with me, because this is Re funny. Um, okay. Rejoinder. Rejoinder. Um, Lady Anne. Lady Anne. Uh, with superb. 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 Okay. Superb. Um, all right. There was no recognized rejoinder to it, and Lady Anne made none. So again, we're talking about his comment about like the religious lighting. Um, and so, even though they make this comment all the time, they never respond to it. Like, there's never a response. It's always just silence, and so she doesn't respond either. So, like, this time she doesn't respond. Um, so, uh, rejoinder is like feedback? Yeah. There's no, like, a rejoinder Answer. is like a response. Okay. It's more, yeah, not like feedback. It's more of a response. Um, if you make a joke about somebody, if you're like making fun of somebody, they might come back with like a witty rejoinder, like a witty response. Um, he lay a stretch. He like he was lying stretched out on the Persian rug. Um, and he didn't really care that Lady Anne was in a bad mood. And so this is their dog. Um, Oh, the cat and the dog. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's actually probably a cat. Oh, uh, also, Persian. I can't imagine that cats shed, so I would say it's still a dog. Um, mm. but it's Persian. Pardon? Is it? It is a Persian cat, but yeah, okay. yeah. I guess the only thing the rough was coming to the glory of its second winter. It's like his fur. I'm thinking like shedding. I don't know if cats really shed or like grow different coats of fur. It could, yeah, I don't know. Persian cats, I don't think there's really such thing as a Persian dog. Um, Persian dog. Oh, there are Persian dogs. Okay. Apparently. Um, yeah. Or maybe... 
Maybe not. I'm not really sure. Um, so it's either a cat or a dog. <laughs> and any other questions? Who is the page boy? It's kind of like a boy. servant. Ah, okay. Um, so, so a type of servant. Certainly he'd be young. Um, and had christened him, had like named him. Um, it's like named him with a Christian name? Yeah. Yeah. You christen him. It's just like naming, really. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. Um, okay. And uh, Nana Carolina, can you read the next part? Left to themselves, Egbert and Lady Anne would be unfailingly have called him Fluff, Fluff, but they were not obesinated. Egbert pour, poured himself out some tea. As the silence gave no sign of breaking on Lady Anne's initiative, he braced <laughs> himself for another ear earmark effort. My remark at lunch had a purely academic application, he announced. You seem to put an unnecessarily personal significance into it. <laughs> okay. Um, obstinate. 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 Initiative, uh, nice job. I. You did a good job. Uh, questions? Um, Yermak was like a Russian conquistador kind of. He explored Siberia. Um, so I'm thinking that it's like a strong or a, you know, persistent effort. I don't really know too much about the history of this Yermak fellow. Um, <laughs> but... I don't think it matters too much. Um, questions okay. here. Unfailingly. Unfailingly. Um, like without a doubt. Like they're yeah, they would definitely have called him fluff. But they were not obstinate. They were not stubborn. Anybody else have any other questions? Okay, so what's happening so far? Just to get a summary. Anybody? Maybe the husband is trying to have some sort of communication with the cold wife. Yeah, so they fought earlier, right? Fought at lunch. And he's trying to, like, you know, get him to talk again. It's like, come on, don't be mad. She hasn't, she's not responding. Yeah, she's really tough. Yeah. And, yeah, pretty much that's about it. We've got a dog, um, or a cat, okay, some sort of animal. Do, do, do. All right, let's have, Judith, can you read the next part? Okay, okay. Lady Anne maintained her defensive barrier of silence. The bullfinch lazily filled in the interval with an air from Iphigenie on Tauride. Egbert recognized it immediately because it was the only air the bullfinch whistled, and he had come to them with the re reputation for whistling it. Both Egbert and Lady Anne would have preferred something from the Mm, Yomon of the God, which was her favorite opera. In matter artistic, they had a similarity, a similarity of taste. Yeah, which is a weird way of saying they had like similar taste in art. Um, matters artistic, they had a similarity of taste. It's like really British. Um, anyways, this is kind of silly. Um, a bullfinch is a type of bird, so. Um, he's complaining that the bullfinch is whistling the wrong opera, which is just silly. Um, 
-hmm. And again, it's written really seriously, but it's funny because it's kind of absurd. Um, um, yeah, uh, the bullfinch, like I said, is a type of bird, a bullfinch. Um, Yeah, so there's bird is just whistling a bird song, and he's imagining it's like a, an opera. And yeah, it, again, it's really silly. It doesn't really mean anything. Um, any like other questions here? Anna Carolina, did you? Catch that? Do you like understand? Yes. Okay. Um, and where are we? Simone, can you read the next part? So I'm trying to have the text back. No. So, yes, yeah, sometimes. Oh, oops. Almost. Oh, yeah, it's back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, um, the lint was the honest and explicit in art, a picture, for instance, that told its own story, which generates assistance from its title. A riderless war horse with harness in obvious disarray, staggering in, into a courtyard full of pale, swooning women and marginally noted bad news, suggested to their minds a distinct interpretation of some mil mil military ca catastrophe. They could see what it, what it was meant to convey and explain it to friends of dual intelligence. Dual <laughs> or dollar, I don't know. Dollar, dollar. Dollar, okay. Ca catastrophe. Catastrophe. Catastrophe, yeah. It's a tough one. Um, but <laughs> so maybe ca catastrophic and catastrophe, that's why I... Yeah. yeah. It's catastrophic. Catastrophic or catastrophe, thank you. Yeah. Dola is like do, like stupid, no? Stupid, yeah, of like duller intelligence, not very sharp. Okay, so why is this funny? This is hilarious. Um, why? Can anybody explain? I'm trying. No, please, help us. Nobody? Julieta, Anna Carolina? No ideas why this might be funny? Something it's funny. Something called bad news is like representing them as a couple. <laughs> Not quite. So we're again talking about art. So we've gone like she's not talking to him. So they're still in this room. She's being silent. He's trying to break the ice. She's like, "Don't be mad." He makes this goofy comment that he's like, "My remark is launched out of purely academic application." Um, so he's like, I don't know, especially the way it's written, it's like really full of themselves. These people are, their <laughs> their pet is named Don Tarkina, not for them, but we've got these people who are like clearly trying to be very high class, I guess. Um, he imagines that the bird is whistling an opera. And he's like, this is the wrong opera. I wish you would whistle a different opera, which is just, it's dumb. So these people are not very smart, is what we've got. And so they, they have similar taste in art, and their taste in art is bad. Like, they're not, again, very smart. They need really explicit art that has <laughs> generous assistance from its title to understand it. So, like, this idea of, like, a a horse that has no rider that's like staggering into a courtyard of pale swooning woman that is noted at the bottom of the picture 
bad news. So that's the name of it. The name of the picture is bad news. And so, yes, obviously, this is suggesting military catastrophe. It's like a military problem. Um, and like what they're saying, they like this art because they can see what it was meant to convey. They like understand the meaning and they can explain it to their stupid friends. So not only are they not very smart, but their friends are even less intelligent. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we've just got like, yeah, maybe not the smartest of people. Um, like me. Aw, don't if you're reading in English. Stop it. Um, and Anna Carolina, can you read the next part? Okay, thank you. Uh, the silence continu continued. As a rule, Lady Anne's displeasure became articulate and markedly voluble after four minutes of the introductory muteness. Egbert seized the milky jug and poured some of its contents into Don Tacchino's saucer. It's a catch, as the saucer was already full to the brim, and an unsightly overflow was, a, was the result. Don Tacchino looked on with a surprised interest that she he vanished into um, elaborating unconsciousness when he was appealed to by Egbert to come and drink up some of the spiritual matter. Okay. Um, really nicely done. Became articulate. Became ar articulate. Articulate. Uh, markedly voluble. Market voluble. After four minutes of introductory. Introductory? Introductory? Muteness. Yeah. And Evanest. You did a nice job with that. Evanest? Evanest. Elaborate. E elaborate. Close. Elaborate. elaborate. Just three syllables. Elaborate. Elaborate. Yeah. Okay. Good. Right. So, does anybody understand this? Okay. Now she's she's giving some response. Mm. No. <laughs> Not now. Okay. Julieta. Uh, she needs to permit of mutinous before displeasure something. <laughs> yeah. So again, these people are just really awful. They're just awful people. Um, not only do they have like a saying that they always say in every afternoon of the winter that it's like dull. It's got like a. They say that it has a religious lighting. Um, <laughs> she also doesn't speak for four minutes. So she's angry. She is silent for four minutes before she starts to talk, before she articulates, before she starts speaking loudly, volubly, um, what is irritating her. Um, so he sees this, it's a jug of milk, so he's like grabbing a jug of milk, and he's pouring it into the cat's bowl, um, yeah, and the bowl or the cup was already full, and so it overflows. And the cat looks on with surprised interest. She's like, "What are you doing?" And then it like kind of transformed Evanest, like turned into an elaborate unconsciousness. So like the cat like elaborately <laughs> pretends to be sleeping again um, <laughs> as soon as Egbert tells him to come drink some of the spilled matter. So yeah, it's just goofy people. Um, any questions? Any other questions? The brim is like the top. Um, so the top of a cup or saucer. Hopefully that makes sense. So Egbert's a little bit uncomfortable. He spills the milk for the cat. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, the cat's hilarious. Um, and Julieta, can you read the next part? Don Jarquino was prepared to play many roles in life, but a vacuum carpet cleaner was not one of them. <laughs> Don't you think we are being rather foolish? said Egbert cheerfully. If Lady Anne thought so, she didn't say so. I dare say the fault has been partly on my side, continued Egbert with the evaporating cheerfulness. After all, I'm only human, you know. You seem to forget that I'm only human. <laughs> Good. Um, questions? All right. Hey, Amp, welcome to class. How's it going? Hi, teacher. Doing well, thank you. Okay. Um, nice to see you again. You've come in late, so you've missed half of our story. Um, yeah, sorry. No worries. So, what's happening in the story so far? Anybody? Can anybody explain? Uh, there are two person, two, two people, and they are on their um, parlor, maybe, mm -hmm. and they are uh, uh, having a tea with uh, a cat on the carpet and uh, they are they had a quarrel and uh, the husband uh, is trying to break the eyes of her wife and the wife's not talking oh. sorry and the wife's not responding so the wife yeah. is not talking yeah uh okay and it's also kind of dark is relatively important it's dimly lit he can't quite see very well. Um, <laughs> the oh my gosh, their wife is dead. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, <laughs> anyway, so now that you guys know the rest of the story. Um, yeah, I guess that's... Yeah. Let's have Simone, can you read the next part? Okay, I'm just waiting for the text. Oh, come back, please. Sorry about that. Okay, he's back. Okay, um, he insisted on that on the point, as if there had been unfounded suggestions that he was built on such lines with gold continu continuations where the human left off. Uh, the bullfinch uh, recommenced its air from Hifigen and to read, I don't know, Egbert yeah, began to feel depressed. Lady Anne was not drinking her tea. Perhaps she was feeling unwell. Uh, but when Lady Anne felt one, one well, she was not one to be reticent on the subject. Okay, so this first sentence is a tricky one. So it, you need to kind of read it with this. So this is like a half man, half goat. Um, this is Sadir. Um, and so he's saying, after all, I'm only human, you know. And so he insisted on the point. So he like continued talking about how he was only human, um, like as if his wife was like saying that he was more of a goat than human. Um, and then again, the bullfinch. We've got the bird again, and. For some reason, he thinks, Edbert thinks that it's like whistling this opera. Um, and then he's like starting to get depressed. Uh, I bet she's that, dead. Sorry, but I bet she's dead. <laughs> oh, um, I've never read this story before. Sorry. That's okay. Don't worry. Um, so she thinks, like he thinks maybe she's feeling unwell. But he's like, well, whenever she feels unwell, she's like always tells me that she feels unwell. He, she's obvious about it. Um, again, these people are just not nice people to be around. They're just bad. Um, so yeah, she always complains about feeling unwell. Um, any other questions here? And 
have AMP. Can you read the next part? No one knows what I suffer from indigestion was one of her favorite statements, but the lack of knowledge can only have been caused by defective listening. The amount of information available on the subject would have supplied material for a monograph. <sighs> Evidently, Lady Anne was not feeling unwell. Edward began to think he was being unreasonably dealt with. Naturally, he began to make concessions. Yeah, um, she's not want. Yeah, is definitely a weird formation. Again, this is an older story. Um, it's not. Hmm, I don't really know how to explain it. She's not want to hmm, to be reticent on this subject. Yeah, but I wouldn't use it anymore. Just be aware that it. That's what it means. Like he's trying to take it easy. He's definitely trying to e take it easy, but the fact that she's not want to be reticent on the subject is that, you know, it's not like her to not talk about it. Um, so if you're not want to do something, um, yeah, it's not like you to do something. Um, okay, and yeah, he's trying to take it easy. He's trying to make up with his wife. Questions here? So again, she always complains about suffering from indigestion, and you know she says that nobody really understands her and how she suffers, um, but she's always talking about it. So if she was alive, she would have been complaining all the time, but she's so quiet. Yeah, so she's got like the four minutes of silence that you know introduce her kind of anger, and also if she is ever sick, she always. She always talks about it. Um, yeah, but she's not talking about it. So, like, yeah, she's probably not feeling unwell. And then he's like, well, she's being unreasonable. And so he's, like, starting to make concessions. He's starting to, like, apologize or, like, try to talk about something else, try to give her things. Uh, Joanna Carolina, can you read the next part? I dare say he observed taking a central position on the heart rug, as Don Tarquinio could be persuaded to concede him. I may have been to blame. I am willing, if I can thereby restore things to a happier standpoint, to undertake to lead a better life. He wondered vaguely how it would be possible. Temptations came to him. In middle ages, Tentatively and without insistence, like a neglected butcher boy who asks for a Christmas box in February for no, no more hopeful reason that he, he didn't get one in December. Okay, um, for no more hopeful reason that then he didn't. That then he didn't. Again, this is really an English formation. In the U.S., we would say than that. But, um, so, yeah, let's make it than that. That's fine. Um, neglected. Neglected. Entity. Neglect. Neglected. Ten tentatively. 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 Good. Okay, so taking a central position on the hearthrug as Don Tarquinio could be persuaded to concede him. So he's like trying to sit in the middle of the rug where the cat is, but the cat's not really letting him sit in the middle because that's where the cat's sitting. So he's like getting as close to the center as the cat is letting him. Does that make sense? So he's like still trying to talk to his wife. He's trying to approach yeah, yeah. her on the rug. Um, any other questions? Okay, so yeah, he's just he's really childish and stupid, just it's kind of these characters. 
Uh, Julia, can you read the next part? He had no more idea of uh, succumbing, succumbing to them that he had of purchasing the fish knives and four boats that ladies are impelled to sacrifice to sacrifice through the medium of advertisement columns during 12 months of the year. Still there was something impressive in this unasked for renunciation of a possibly latent uh, enormities. Lady Anne showed no sign of being pressed. Egbert looked, looked at her nerv nervously through his glasses. Yeah, a boa. Can you repeat a boa? Boa. Uh -huh. A boa is like a scarf, scarf. Kind of. Yeah, it's like a really fluffy, fancy scarf. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what that is. Uh, latent. 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 Yeah. Latent. Um, right. So he's, again, just talking about being a better person. Um, it's a fish knife. A fish knife. Um, it's a knife to cut actually, fish. Yeah. It is a knife to cut fish. I'm not actually sure if it's something else. Mm. Um yeah, no, it's a fish knife. That's it. It's a knife to cut fish. Um, hmm. Okay. Yeah, I guess kind of. It's got the implication that ladies like to cook. Um, yeah. So again, it's an old story. <laughs> um, yeah. So again, he's just talking about being a better person. This is a really weird sentence. Um, He's like he's just saying there's something impressive about you know deciding to be a better person and like give up the things that he's tempted um, because like these temptations he's not like planning on them he's just like a child and you know so he's like oh it was something really big me saying that I'm gonna be better I'm gonna live like a better person but she's not impressed and so he's looking at her nervously through his glasses. And let's have uh, Simone. Can you read the next part? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, to get the worst of an argument with her was no new experience. To get the worst of a monologue was a humiliating novelty. <laughs> I shall, I shall, I shall, I shall go and dress for dinner. He announced in a voice into which he intended some shade of of sternness to creep, which I don't know the meaning. At the door, a final excess of weakness impelled him to make a further appeal. Adam Tui being very silly, a fool, a fool was Don Tarkinius' mental comment as the door closed on Egbert's retreat. <laughs> okay, good. Um, access. 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 Final access of weakness. Um, so, like, this idea of we he's becoming weak again, and so he's, f like, not forced, but he's kind of pushed to make, like, one last, like, appeal to his wife. He's, like, trying to make contact with her. Um, <laughs> so this first sentence, or this first part, uh, what's happening here? Can somebody explain that? Nobody? Amp, can you explain the first two sentences? Well, it, that is usually that they, they 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 were arguing all the time. Yeah, it's so not like a new spirit, he said. But also, you know, who wins the arguments? She. 
she mm -hmm. generally her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but to get the worst of a monologue was a humiliating novelty. Yeah, he he was the only one that was speaking, and he he was uh, she wasn't answering back. So and he still he lost. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's just funny. I it's yeah, it's funny. <laughs> Anyways, I <laughs> am. Can you finish the story? Then he lifted his velvet four paws in the air and dipped lightly onto a bookshelf immediately under the bullfinch cage. F bullfinch's cage. It was the first time he had seemed to know the bird's existence, but he was carrying out a long-formed theory of action with the precision of mature deliberation. The bullfinch who had fancied himself something of a despot, depressed himself a sudden into a third of his normal displacement. Then he felt to a helpless wind beating and shrill chipping. He had cost twenty seven shillings without the cage, but Lady Anne made no sign of interfering. She had been dead for two hours. I knew it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's look at mature. 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 And wing beating. Wing beating. And cheeping. Cheeping. Um, okay. That sounded good. And questions. What is uh, shrill cheeping? Uh, so, like a cheeping is the sound that birds make when they're not whistling. They're like ah. cheep. They like they make that like squeaking kind of sound. Mm -hmm. That's a cheep. And okay. shrill is just like really high pitched. Okay. Like Spanish people talking. Mm, I see. Spanish people speak shrilly. <laughs> yeah. Really I high pitch. Okay. Yeah, I guess so. At least um, here in Spain, South America is different. Yeah, I'm not sure. I guess I don't. Know. I am. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> really. Um. And yeah, any other questions? But I don't understand if the bullfinch just died or. Oh yeah, the bullfinch is totally, totally dead. But because of the cat. Yeah, the cat kills it. Um, oh no. Yeah. Like, poor, poor bird. Um, yeah, and that's it. Um, any other questions or comments? Mm. Okay. Um, yeah, so I guess, what did you think of what you read of the story, Amp? Um, well, uh, it, it probably the, the, the guy, it was a, it, the, the, the bird was a, his company with the one that he, he likes to talk, and now is that. Um, not. I mean, the bird is just a bird, and he whistles. Um, apparently, he he might whistle like the tune of a um. What am I saying? Uh, an opera. So he's whistling an opera tune, potentially. Um, or maybe he's not. I don't. I don't really know. Um, Edgar at least thinks the bird was whistling an opera tune. Um, yeah, I, I don't really know. So the bird is just a bird. Um, I guess then, Carolina, really what about you? Did you kind of get the story? Did you catch it? Ah, uh, Joshua, I'm I'm sorry. I I I can't see understand these stories. Um, well, the husband and the wife had an, an argument. 
Mm -hmm. and, and they were not get along with one another, I guess, and the, and the guy was trying to to draw her attention, and, and she was just pay attention at the catch? Mm, no? Not quite. All because she was dead. She was dead. She'd been dead for uh, two hours. Ah, uh, okay. So... Yeah, and, yeah. But who would drink at the top of the the um, the cat? Uh, my gosh. Okay, so I, I thought it was, it was she. It was so him. the guy put the milk. Ah, okay. In the saucer, yeah, the guy put milk in the saucer. Um, okay. Because he was kind of nervous because she wasn't responding to him, so he was trying to talk to her and make up for the fight that they had. And she's like not responding, and so he like <laughs> spills so the milk. So he, he killed her. Awesome. No, 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 she was already dead. dead. She was dead, no, and he I... just didn't notice. Yeah. So, yeah, what had happened was that she died, and he's trying to talk to her. She just doesn't and, respond. And where it, it is written that the body also is dead. Uh, the bird's not dead yet. The bird's going to die. Um, oh, okay. Don Tarquinio, the cat, has had a long-formed theory of action with the precision of mature deliberation. So he's been planning on killing the, the bird for a long time, apparently. Um, oh. he, he also thinks that Egbert is a fool. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I guess that's all. Um the birds freaked out. He had considered himself a despot, but, you know, he clearly is not. He is <laughs> helplessly winged and surely cheaping. Um, yeah. And, yeah, uh, I can send you the link. Ah, uh, maybe. So this is the story right here. Um, the very tragedy is the birth end. I'm not sure what you mean, Julieta. But the 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 tragic part is uh, the end of the bird. <laughs> oh, the bird's end. Yeah. Mm. Oh, poor bird. Um, yeah. And so I I mean I guess it's just this is a really funny story because it's just making fun of people who take themselves really seriously. Um, and are also not very smart. And so, yeah, I guess I guess the real story is just making fun of people. It's not it's not too intense. It's just yeah, he's not writer. smart, really, because it took her like a while to realize that she was dead. He never realized she was he dead. He never, yeah, because he laughed before. Yeah, oh, come on. Yeah, he. Uh, his last comment is like, aren't we being very silly? And then he closes the door. Yeah, um, so he left. Oh, really silly. <laughs> yeah, but like, I don't know. I think one of my favorite things is they have a, um, what is it? Their, their remark between 4.30 and 6 on winter evenings is like that it's got a dim religious light. I, who makes the same stupid remark about the lighting between 4.30 and people. 6 and just silly people. They're just very silly. Um, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of, like, really funny things. Just, the writing kind of lends itself to the seriousness. So, you know, it's written in this, like, really grave way. Um, but, yeah, it's it's just kind of nice. Um, any other questions or comments or anything that you guys have to say? No, just I'm sorry for having said that she was dead. I didn't know. Oh, don't be sorry at all. It's funny. Um, I didn't want to spoil the, you know, the end. But oh, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> Maybe I it's was not, a little bit, I was a little bit smarter than him, so I could realize she was dead. He couldn't. Yeah. Oh, and um, yeah, I don't know. I think that was it. And I've got another class right after this. If you guys want to join. Um, yeah. But yeah, thanks for coming in, and hopefully we'll see you soon.